Search and rescue teams continue to sift through the rubble of the collapsed Florida condo. The Supreme Court has ruled on a transgender bathroom case by, not ruling on it. And to the Pacific Northwest, let us know if you need a fan. It's Alex. Mondays are long. Luckily, the short list isn't. The short list is a snappy USA Today news roundup. Subscribe to the newsletter here or text messages here. To all our short list readers in the Pacific Northwest, stay safe, drink plenty of fluids, stay in an air-conditioned room, stay out of the sun, and check up on relatives and neighbors, according to the Weather Service. Young children and pets should never be left unattended in vehicles under any circumstances. The Supreme Court on Monday declined to hear a dispute over whether schools may bar transgender students from using a bathroom that reflects their gender identity, permitting a lower court ruling against those prohibitions to stand. By not taking the case, the Supreme Court, without comment, let stand a ruling that found the Gloucester County School Board in Virginia discriminated against Gavin Grimm, a transgender man who was denied access to the boys' bathroom years ago when he was a high school student. I am glad that my years-long fight to have my school see me for who I am is over, Grimm said in a statement released by the American Civil Liberties Union. Five days after a Florida condo partially collapsed, town officials are holding on to hope of finding survivors in the rubble. The death toll has risen to 10 after first responders pulled a body from the site on Monday, and 151 people remained unaccounted for. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Carver stressed that first responders are out there with every resource that they need to ensure that they can search this area. The U.S. military launched airstrikes against Iranian-backed militias in Syria in retaliation for drone attacks, the Pentagon announced Sunday evening. The strikes targeted sites used to launch drone attacks on U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq. It's too early to tell whether there were casualties on the ground among civilians or militants, according to a defense official who was not authorized to speak publicly. Navy CMDR. Jessica McNulty said Sunday night that Iranian-backed militias launched five drone attacks against facilities used by U.S. and allied troops in Iraq since April. Militia members have also fired rockets. This is a compilation of stories from across the USA Today network. Want this news roundup in your inbox every night? Sign up for the shortlist newsletter here.